Listen, I have to tell you the truth. You're never gonna be respected in the gym with that pathetic bench press. I know, tough love, but it's true. You may ask yourself, well, how do I build a better bench press? Cause my shoulders are made out of glass. Don't worry folks, I am a fellow glass shoulder haver. My shoulders are garbage but I have been able to increase my bench press steadily using the tips and the programming strategies that I am going to give you in this video. So first things first, we have to talk about pain management and rehab. If you have a shoulder issue that's holding you back from bench press, you want to rule out any actual structural damage. If you have a torn rotator cuff, Go get that sorted. Follow a course of action with an orthopedic surgeon or a physical therapist. Get the underlying cause fixed first. I'm specifically talking about general discomfort when we are bench pressing that doesn't have an underlying cause. Maybe your shoulders are just cranky. Maybe they just feel a little stiff. Maybe your shoulder mobility is a little bit off and that is causing the feeling of pain when you reach a certain rep range or a certain weight cap with your bench press. Now, when most people hear shoulder mobility issues, the first thing they go to is a bunch of prehab or rehab movements, which are okay. I do not want this video to come across me saying, just be a meathead, get under the bar, the issues will work themselves out. Sometimes there are real mobility issues that are holding you back. If you have a tight thoracic spine, if you have bad shoulder mobility, those can legitimately hold you back from progressing the bench press. But we need to make a determination whether that is the best course of action or whether you can just bench press through it. What I like to do is the range of motion test. I take a flat back bench press and I attempt to go through it with like, I don't know, 60, 70% of my one rep max, a, a weight that is challenging, but is not going to cause me insane pain if things go wrong. If I can go through the full range of motion without my competition arch, without any of the crazy powerlifting constraints put on it, it's not so much a mobility issue that's causing me problems, it's more so a loading issue. If you do this test and you reach a certain point in the range of motion, maybe halfway to the chest, maybe coming off the chest, and that is when the pain starts, I think it's relatively safe to say that you're dealing with a mobility issue. And in the case of a mobility issue, we want to implement some mobility strategy. That could be anything from soft tissue work to training in that range of motion with lighter weight. There's a ton of different rehab movements. You open up Instagram, you'll see a thousand physical therapists giving you a thousand different movements to go through. There are a couple that I think work pretty universally. First one is going to be just a general banded shoulder complex, for lack of a better word, where we're doing band openers, where we're going behind the back and back in front, where we're doing external rotation. Basically, that's just gonna help us build strength in that range of motion that we're hopefully going to carry over to the bench press. I want to be very clear, doing just these types of exercises for three to six months and just hoping that that's gonna fix your bench press will not work. At the end of the day, if your goal is to bench press more weight, you have to bench press. These exercises are going to be used primarily as a way to stabilize the shoulder, to warm up before you bench press, and to build strength in that range of motion. But if you're not carrying that strength over to the bench press, you're wasting time with these exercises. You haven't adequately utilized specificity to your advantage. You've been doing a lot of random shoulder movements, yes, but you haven't effectively utilized those shoulder movements in the bench press itself. So the next step in the action plan is to train bench press variations that allow you to train the bench press without causing that shoulder discomfort and help you really push the bench press in a safe way. You will not find a better exercise than the pin press when it comes to a constraint that is going to allow you to overload the bench press without putting your shoulder in any iffy position. The pin press set up about two to three inches off the chest where you're starting from a dead stop is really gonna help you stay out of the danger zone with your shoulder because you're never going to a competition level of depth, but you can still overload the movement, which I think is fantastic. A lot of people will completely remove the bench press from their programming, and then when their shoulder feels better, they will have lost so much progress because the bench press will be so detrained. Using the pin press in this way allows you to continue to train the bench press, to hold on to adaptation, or to continue to drive adaptation so that when you can go back to a competition style bench press, you haven't lost all of the training and all of the fitness that you've done for months before. Something I did that I think is really helpful for people is starting with a high pin, maybe three inches off of the chest, and through blocks of training, bring that pin lower and lower. You're training in the ranges of motion that oftentimes give you pain, but you have constraints that allow you to work around that pain. And then you'll be able to take the pain completely away 
utilize the technique work that you've done under the pin press to protect your shoulders a little bit better. A couple other exercises that I really like, a board press basically does the same thing as a pin press, but you have more of the load in your hands, you don't have the pins to rest the bar on. So this is a good progression. If you can't get all the way to the chest, but the pin press has kind of run its course, throw the board press in there, it changes the stimulus just enough, but still allows you to feel comfortable in the shoulder. I think it's a solid next step. Also don't neglect the tempo press. The tempo causes you to have to bring the absolute load down. A three or five second tempo descent is going to take that weight that absolute load and make it feel more challenging because of the constraint that you're putting on yourself with the tempo. So you're able to use lighter loads and still drive adaptation while keeping your shoulder healthy and happy. We've talked about some prehab, some rehab work, some variations of the bench press that are gonna help you maintain adaptation. And the last piece of the puzzle is programming considerations. In powerlifting circles, the bench press is looked at as the ugly stepsister. With deadlift, if you go over two times a week, you're gonna crush yourself. With squat, most of the time, if you're training it more than three times a week, you're in for a bad time. The bench press is kind of looked at as, eh, throw it on every day, you'll be fine, you can just get some touches, especially with lighter lifters. This may be true for some people, but for others, one or two times, max three is really all you can squeeze out of the movement. Personally, if I train bench press more than three times a week, my shoulders and my elbows are going to be wrecked. When you are building an effective program, you have to ask yourself if higher frequencies, which is conventional wisdom for how to get better on a movement, is actually going to be best for you based on how you recover from that movement. The only way to really know this is to practice with different frequencies. I started out benching four times a week and was really wrecking my shoulders, but I was was lighter in the bench press at the time, so I was able to make it through. As I've gotten stronger in the movement, I've had to peel some of that frequency back, or I've had to change the amount of time that I am competition style bench pressing. So I may be competition style bench pressing once a week, but adding in extra exposures to the movement through lighter tempo work like we discussed, through pin presses, through board presses, to protect my shoulder in a different range of motion. Programming intelligently is where the fun of powerlifting comes in. If you can crack your personal code and find the best frequency that not only drives almost perfect adaptation, but also keeps you healthy and not feeling that pain, then you've hit the jackpot. And now you just recycle that programming over and over again. I think a good place to start for most people is benching two to three times a week, with one of those days being developmental technique work, where you're not going very heavy, but you're still bringing the same effort and focus to the movement. So a, a sample program may look like this. Day one, primary bench, we're working in the three to six rep range for a moderate level of volume. Day two, maybe we're working on a specific area that needs improvement. So if you're bad at lockout, you're using a high pin press or you're using some form of tricep oriented variation. Day three, then we're bringing in the tempo. We are trying to prime the bench press for the next primary day. We're gonna use lighter loads on this day while still emphasizing great technique so that we can get a good carryover to our primary bench press day. This is just one example. There are countless examples for countless individuals out there. You need to have some intelligence and some critical thinking when you're building a program, or you need to start working with a coach who will be able to build you a program based on your input and based on their expertise that will get you where you wanna be faster and in some cases, safer as well. My friends, if your bench press doesn't blow up after this, you get your money back guarantee. And unfortunately, you're not paying me anything, but the money back guarantee still stands. I promise you, if you work through these three steps when it comes to rehabbing and building your bench press, you will be back on track to building a respectable bench press so that you can start bragging about that and stop focusing on your poverty squat and your poverty deadlift. Always a pleasure talking to you fine folks. If you enjoyed the video, please share it around and like it. Subscribe to the channel, we've got content coming out all the time helping you get stronger. If you want to learn about a real lift, you can click on this video right here to find out the ways to increase your squat because at the end of the day, real people squat, fake people bench press. Sorry, that's just how I feel. Thank you so much for watching. Get strong and stay strong.